Hi everyone. Now we are in lecture 3. We will continue to see the nature of econometrics by concentrating on the different types of economic data we could use in econometric analysis. Econometric analysis requires data because data is what we did econometric analysis for. Without data, there is no econometric analysis and we cannot benefit from econometric science. It is a science which is already using data and only data. But data has different kinds. Mainly, we could concentrate around four different types. The first is cross-sectional data. Second is time series data. Third pull the cross sections fourth panel or longitudinal data econometric methods depend on the nature of the data used use of inappropriate methods may lead to misleading results for example of this if you have a time series data and we analyze it as cross-sectional data, this ended up with what we call spurious regression or false regression. In this case, we cannot depend on the result of the estimated model. It is a big mistake and very dangerous. What is cross-sectional data sets? Or mainly, what could be the cross-sectional? This is a data without concerning for time dimension, or data collected for one period of time, sample of individuals, households, firms, cities, states, countries, or other units of interest at a given point of time in a given period. Cross-sectional observations are more or less independent, which means we don't expect that to be already depend on each other. For example of this, pure random sampling from a population. When we collect a sample randomly from a population, we expect this could be a cross-sectional data as long as we already get it in one period and will not repeat it again. Sometimes pure random sampling is violated. An example of this Units refuse to respond in surveys. Like those people, they are not willing to respond for surveying when we are really collecting data. Or if sampling is characterized by clustering. Cross-sectional data typically encountered in applied microeconomics which mean the field of study which concern about individual units like consumers or producers. One of consumers, one of producers. The cross-sectional data could be presented as in the following table. 
Here we can see that this is the cross-sectional data set on wages and other individual characteristics. In OPS NO, this is a, pres a preservation number, which means that we start with observation number one and collecting data about this for wages, for education, for experience, for gender, and for mutual condition. And we still collecting data until the observation number 526, which means we collected data from 526 different persons for a specific period of time. We can see that first colon represent observation number, second colon represent hourly wages, third represent years of education, fourth years of experience. For number five and six, those variables we call they are indicator variables or variable could take two different values, one or zero. In case of female, the values will be one in case of the person is female and zero if the person is male. In case of married, one for married person zero for those they are not married another example of cross-sectional data here we can see the relationship between growth rate and country characteristics First colon represent number of observation. We can see that in this sample we have 61 different countries. These countries name is already presented in the second colon. For example, the first Argentina, second Australia, Belgium, to the last one Zimbabwe. The third colon represents average growth rate of real per capita GDP. In the red circle, we can see this average is 1.24 for Bolivia. The fourth colon represents the government consumption as a percentage of GDP. This is 18 which means 18% from GDP is coming from government consumption. Last colon represents adult secondary education grades. In the number 4, we can see this is 12. Now we are turning to the second type, time series data. These represent one variable or many variables. We repeat collecting data for them from time to time for a specific frequency of time. Like each year, for example. And we can say that. These time series data represent observational variables of several variables over time. We are looking for the behavior of them. For example, stock prices recorded each period, money supply, consumer price index, gross domestic products.
automobile sales, and so on. Time series observations are typically seriously correlated because we're looking for example the stock prices in different times maybe each day so the price today may be linked or correlated to the price of yesterday ordering of observation conveys important information data frequency could be daily each day weekly which means 52 times per year monthly 12 times per one year quarterly four times a year or annually which means data presented once per year Typical feature of time series could be summarized in trends and seasonality, which means change from season to season. Typical applications applied macroeconomics and finance, like testing economic growth like testing the relationship between the return and the price of the security over time here we have an example of time series data on minimum wages and related variables number of observation here is series 8 these series 8 represent how many years in December years start in 1950 and ended up in 1987 colon number 3 represent average minimum wages for the given year Colon number four, average coverage rate. Colon number four, could be presenting the percentage of those covered by the government against unemployment. Colon number five is unemployment rate. Colon number six gross national products. If you're looking for a minute for the expected relationship between these variables. For example, average minimum wages has a relationship with gross national products. It could be positive. When gross national product is increasing, we expect average wages should increase. Now we are turning to pooled cross-section data. These represent two or more cross-sections combined in one dataset. Pooled cross-section often used to evaluate policy changes. For example, to explain what is the impact of a change in policy. This is something known as before and after approach. 
We have an example here. Evaluate effect of a change in property tax on our in-house prices in USA. This already in force in 1994. Random sample of house price for the year 1993 drone. A new random sample of house price for the year 1995 drone. To compare before and after. Here for sure 1993 before reform. 1995 after tax reform. That does summarize as following the staple. We can see that we have 250 observation for the year 1993 and after this we have 270 observations for, for year 1995 When we pulled these two together, we have what we call pool data. We can see that the third cone represents the price, fourth, property tax, fifth size of house in square feet 6 number of bedrooms last colon number of bathrooms that dotted or dashed line the red one in the middle of the graph showed that before this line, we have one cross-section sample. After this, we have another cross-section sample. By putting them together, we have what we call pooled cross-sections to test what happened before and after the tax reform. Now, we are turning to panel or longitudinal data. The same cross-section unit are followed over time, which means we repeating the recording for the same observation over many different periods of time. Panel data have a cross-sectional and time series dimension. And this is very clear why this one is unique comparing with cross-section and time series. Panel data can be used to account for time invariant unobservables. Panel data can be used to model lagged responses. We have an example here. City crime statistics collected for each city in two years. Time invariant unobserved city characteristic may be modeled. Effect of police on crime rate may exhibit time lag. In this table, we can see the following. For each city in the second column, from city number 1 to city number 150, we have two observations, as it is clear, in column 1. 
this because we have two different years for each city one in 1986 the second 1990 and after this we have number of murders followed by population size and after this unemployment level and finally the size of police in economics sometimes we are already interested in causality and the notion of citrus variables when we said causality here we mean that how does variable y change if variable x change it this is mainly what we are looking for here we have many different cases for causality like the effect of fertilizer or crop yield Another example here is the return to education. How the years of education could affect the return or wages. This is the end. Thanks.